What's happening guys? Today we're going to be going over the master's degree tier list and I made one like this last year in 2020. A lot of things have happened since then and so I'm redoing the list. I'm adding a few things and I'm also going to be changing up some of the rankings based on what has happened in the world. Now this is a highly requested video and I'm basically just going to jump right into it. Obviously, you know, tap the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, blah, 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 blah. And let's get into it. Okay, so first one on the list is going to be acupuncturist. Okay, so there's several different degrees out there that kind of fall under this category. Uh, it's kind of like Eastern medicine, acupuncturist, uh, you know, natural medicine, naturopath, um, all of those sorts of things. Not a lot of jobs out there for acupuncturist and, you know, natural medicine doctors. The jobs that are out there usually don't pay very well. In terms of the debt to income ratio, which is very important for you to look at, especially if you're evaluating degrees where you have to take out what are known as grad plus loans, which is most of the graduate level degrees, the debt to income ratio is really, really bad. It's about 4.6 to 1, and that is the worst on the entire list, right? So this one is just not very good. Um, acupuncturist is going to go into F tier. And by the way, guys, F tier is the worst. S tier is the best. I do get that common sometimes. Um, so, you know, the ones that are in the bottom are the worst. The ones that are on the top are the best. Next, we're going to be talking about art related master's degree. So this is where you would go to a school and get a master's level degree in some type of art. Maybe you go to Juilliard, study piano, or, you know, you get some kind of uh, degree in painting, maybe graphic design, etc. Now, there are a very rare subset of people out there where this is going to be worth it for you. If you're someone who has just ridiculous talent, when it comes to art, uh, this can be a good opportunity for you. For instance, let's say you're you know, really good at playing classical guitar and you get an opportunity to go to Juilliard School of Music uh, to you know, practice with some of the best classical guitarists in the world, then yes, okay, go ahead and take that opportunity. I saw my shot and I took it. That's gonna apply to like 0.01% of people out there though. For most people, when it comes to you know, making money from art, a lot of the time it's not an employable skill. Now, what do I mean by employable skill? I mean that it's a skill that is very easily going to get you a job. That does not mean that it isn't a valuable skill. Art obviously enhances the lives of many people throughout the world, and so it is a valuable skill, it's just not employable. So what you need to do is figure out an alternative way to make money from it. And in my opinion, the smartest way for you to do that is to just simply go off on your own and start your own business. I think it would be much smarter for you to spend the, you know, about six years or so it would take for you to get your master's, uh, just move to a city that has like a good art scene, make friends with a bunch of people who are also into whatever art you're into, and then just practice with them. You might even be able to find someone who's extremely good who you can hire at a low price or maybe make them your mentor. I think you'll learn a heck of a lot more doing it this way, and it'll cost a lot less than going to art school. That's on average though. Like I said, there are exceptions. Um, so for this one, I'm also going to be putting it into F tier. Next one on the list is going to be college professor. Now, if you are able to get a gig as a college professor, which is a little bit difficult to do with just a master's level degree, but sometimes you can get gigs um, as a college professor, you know, at like a community college, for instance, with just a master's, this is a pretty sweet job, okay? A lot of people want to become college professors, especially in certain types of degrees, and not a lot of them get to actually do it. Very, very competitive, especially depending on what degree you're going into. Usually the ones that are the most competitive are also the ones where it's the hardest to find jobs in. And that's just simply because of supply and demand. If there's a bunch of people graduating with a degree, then there's gonna be a lot of saturation. A lot of people are going to go on, they can't find a job, so what do they do? They go back to school and they try to become a professor. But with that being said, if you're able to become a professor, this is a super sweet gig. Fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and put this one into B tier. Next on the list is going to be data science. And the reason I included this one is generally speaking, if you want to become a data scientist, 
you are going to need to get a master's level degree. Now, I know a lot of people out there would disagree with me. A lot of the time in the tech industry, people are, you know, very into teaching themselves or learning in, in ways that are alternative to traditional college. And there are some people out there that absolutely can do that without a doubt, but for the average person, you are going to want to get a master's degree in data science if you wanna become a data scientist. But data science is one of the hottest skills that you can possibly learn. This one, without a doubt, is going to be one of the best careers you can go into in the next 10 to 20 years. Everything is moving towards you know, information, data science, um, you know, data itself is more valuable than gold or oil now. So this one is definitely going into S tier. And for some reason, I took two pictures of that one, so I'm gonna put it in there twice, just for good measure. Next on the list is going to be a Master's of Business Administration. Now, this one can be really good. Um, it is on the list of the degrees that create the most millionaires. A lot of people who end up becoming CEOs or executives do get MBAs. However, I think this is one of those degrees that has been cheapened quite a bit in the last 20 years or so just because of the fact that it's pretty much just oversaturated. There's too many different programs, too many different universities that offer it. So you can pretty much get an MBA in a cracker box these days. Like it's totally ridiculous how easy it is for you to just tack on an MBA. You can do it online, you can do it while you're taking other schooling. So I think the big thing about getting an MBA is if you are gonna do it, make sure you do it for a reason, right? And also make sure you're getting it from a reputable university. So yeah, this one does kind of depend, but if you look at the statistics, it is pretty good. So for that reason, I am gonna put it into A tier. Next on the list is going to be a master's level education degree or teaching degree. So this is where you would get like an education degree and then you go back to school and get your master's and of course you would get a salary bump from that. Not bad, a lot of teachers do end up going down this route, um, but it doesn't really pop off the page either. So this is one that is, you know, okay. Um, the debt to income ratio on this one was 2.5 to one, so it is manageable. But yeah, I'll go ahead and put this one into C tier. Next on the list is going to be one of my personal favorites, which is nurse practitioner. This is a degree that is basically the six year nursing degree. You can even go one higher than this and become a DNP, which is basically the doctorate version of a nurse. But yeah, this one is absolutely fantastic. The debt to income ratio was 1.3. Um, you know, they make fantastic money, lots of demand. Uh, pretty good job satisfaction. Um, there's just so many different options. If you want to be able to change whatever your career is, it's not as difficult as it would be for a doctor, for instance. This is a fantastic one, definitely going into S tier. Next on the list is going to be occupational therapist. And generally speaking, this is a master's level degree, although many people think that it's going to be moving more towards becoming a doctoral level degree in the near future. So the debt to income ratio here is about 3.2 to one. Um, I do think there are some programs out there that kind of scam people just because of the fact that this is such a popular career to go into. And the reason it's so popular is because it has such a high job satisfaction rating. This is actually one of the highest job satisfaction ratings out of all of the different careers out there. And I think the reason for that is because you basically get to, you know, see someone from the time that they get injured and help them live a relatively normal life. So you really get to see the fruits of your labors, whereas other types of healthcare, you know, you might see someone one time and then you kind of just have to wonder after that point how they are. So yeah, I would say with this one, be careful what school you go to. There are some occupational therapy mills out there. Make sure you go to a school that isn't going to scam you and charge you way more than uh, is needed. But this one overall is going to go into B tier, pretty solid. Next one on the list is going to be physician assistant, now known as physician associate. This one has a 2.1 to one debt to income ratio, not too bad at all. Pretty similar to nurse practitioner, even easier for you to switch your specialty than it is for nurse practitioner. A lot of positives to this one. You make a six figure salary, uh, lots of flexibility, um, pretty high job satisfaction. You can actually prescribe and diagnose under the supervision of a physician. Really good one, uh, super solid option 
mention, this one goes into S tier. Next on the list is going to be psychologist at the master's level. Now I've talked a lot about psychology. It's one of those degrees that a ton of people are interested. Over 100,000 people graduate with this degree every single year. It is the single most popular degree. And I can see why. A lot of people find it interesting. I think it's interesting. However, when you have all these people going into a degree and there's just not as many jobs to keep up with it, that's when something called saturation happens. And this one is definitely saturated. You have to get a master's at a bare minimum in order to get a job. But with that being said, if you're really passionate about it, you know what you're getting into, you can definitely you know, impact people's lives in a positive way. Uh, this one can be somewhat decent as long as you really do your research, it can be viable. And so for that reason, it's going to go into C tier. Next one on the list is going to be a master's in some type of science related degree, right? So maybe a master's in physics or chemistry or biochemistry. Now, the thing about science degrees, in my opinion at least, is I think they're extremely valuable, but unfortunately the market doesn't really treat them uh, the way that they deserve to be treated, especially at the bachelor's level. So if you get a science degree at the bachelor's level, you're probably gonna have quite a bit of trouble getting a job, or at least a lot more than you would think. However, at the master's level, it gets a little bit better. And so this one I am going to go ahead and put into B tier. Next on the list is going to be a social science or humanity degrees that is at the master's level. Okay, so something like, you know, anthropology, sociology, etc. Now, unfortunately, these are the types of degrees which pretty much the only jobs available out there that are, you know, at least directly available um, that, you know, a lot of people end up going into are going to require like a doctoral, your PhD level. So this stuff is extremely interesting, but unfortunately there just aren't that many jobs that are available out there. And the numbers for these are very, very bad. Now a lot of the time I recommend people who have gotten like master's degrees or, or something like that, try to get government jobs. That seems to be kind of like their best option. And a lot of the times these jobs have absolutely nothing to do with the degree that they got. However, government jobs can be pretty decent, right? So it is a bit of a trade-off, but you know, if you, you can work around it if you have to. Uh, but overall, uh, I have to be fair here, this one is going into D tier. Next one on the list is going to be a master's of social work. And this is a master's level degree where you would get it in order to become a social worker. And this one is very similar to uh, getting a psychology degree at the master's level. A lot of the same issues with the psychology degree. Um, it's also going to go into C tier. Uh, next one on the list is going to be liberal arts. Uh, this is going to go into the same category uh, at the master's level as the social science slash humanity degrees went into. I'm gonna go ahead and put it into D tier. And then the next one on the list is going to be technology, engineering, and mathematics degree at the master's degree level. So these are going to be obviously like technology degrees, engineering degrees, and mathematics degrees. Not science degrees because science isn't as good as the other STEM degrees. Now the great thing about these is usually you can very easily get a job in undergrad just with a bachelor level degree. And so a lot of these are not saturated. It's much easier to become a professor in engineering, mathematics, science, etc., because of the fact that you can get a job in undergrad with just a bachelor's degree and so you're not going to be competing against all those people who can't get a job and they decide to go back to school and so there's actually a lot of opportunity out there for people who graduate with these types of degrees and so for that reason this one is also going into s tier check out my other videos right here i made them just for you go ahead hit that like button you know ring the notification bell hit the subscribe button do all the other stuff uh, comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. that you have on the video. Let me know you, uh, what you think about these, especially if you're someone who's graduated with uh, some of these degrees. I would love to hear your perspective on this, and I will see you next time.